gold, all the damage necessary to run away with that game, but the team couldn't curate or engineer scenarios for that Graves to have the impact that he had. Castle, on the other hand, on the Nidalee, he found the spears yeah. and the fights over and over. Because for self it was a really hard game because he just got outranged by a lot of stuff on, on the TES comp, and he was just beaten against the sign that he could not get through. So you only the only way he's able to fight is if he can reach the back line, and then his burst damage would be huge. But Carson Nidalee was absolutely insane. I, if I'm TS coach, I want him on that again. It was that yeah. good that I want to see him pilot it one more time. If I were to bank everything on a player in this final game, I would look at Carsa. Well, Carsa, for the time being, is going to lock in the Lee Sin. It was what helped Top Esports pick up their first win on this comeback. They're two in a row so far. And now, Self Made will need to reveal what does he want to run into the Lee Sin and in conjunction with the Sin. Could see him holding off on that for a little while. It's very, very common for Fnatic to hold that jungle pick until much later in the draft, even after TES have shown that Lee Sin. I think you put Hillisang on the Rakan. When Fnatic get into crunch situations, when Fnatic's back are against the wall, they will almost always default to comfort. Picks like the Rakan for Hillisang. These types of champions are always what they want in these game fives when it, you know, it doesn't matter everything else. You want your players to feel at home, you want them in the best possible position. And if Hillison can find the engages that he has so many times, that will be huge. TF, when I look down at four games in a row banned by uh, Top Esports, this time around available, and it is now locked in. Exactly, and you speak about comfort. Nemesis, Twisted Fate. He played the AD variety, he plays the AP variety now. Do it. But Knight played mid lane Nocturne in the group stage as a specific counter pick into the Twisted Fate. The, the Silas is a bit more tame version of that, and I think with an AD jungler, it makes a lot more sense to diversify a bit and make sure you have that Silas for the magic damage. But with the Silas left open, this is gonna be spicy. Once again, Nemesis has that global impact, but Knight can be favored in the lane. He absolutely can, and we've seen that Silas already found itself banned once or twice this series. And this is it, do or die for both sides with the least in locked in for Kasa. And we've got our mid and bot already on top esports. Now we need to see what jungle pick self made is going to go for. Every time that Jackie Love has run Ezreal, the Yumi and the Bard have been the phase two bans for Fnatic. With Yumi removed from the table, I would anticipate Bard being the follow up. Kindred and Camille taken away from top esports. So do we have a Tonk v Tonk top laner once again? I mean, I, I think that has to be the expectation with how the games have been playing with stuff like the Ornn being left open. Uh, once again, though, Twisted Fate, not the best champion in terms of damaging tanky frontliners for your magic damage. That's why we're going to see the uh, Scion ban come through. Of course, this does leave, leave open the Bard that has been commonly banned. It was the Yumi and Bard bans next to the Ezreal if they wanted to play for that ranged matchup here. And, you know, Bard sees a Rakan, Eon to a Senna. Well, that's a pretty nice lineup for a Q if you want to land that CC. What do you prefer, Leona or the Bard? I think that uh, I like Leona in the hands of Eonja because one thing that I think is very scary in the hands of an LPL team is that immediate hard engage from long range. And Bard does have that with his ultimate, but it's a little bit different comparing that to a Solar Flare here. So the Leona into the Rakan is sort of that point and click champion that if uh, Rakan hops in, you can instantly see, see that, but very hard to lock down the Zenith Blade. And I also think when you look at the likes of Silas and Lee Sin go forward, uh, I think Synergize is a little bit better holistically as a team than necessarily the Bard. You can allow Jackie Love to just sit in the flanks and play however he wants to. With Camille, Sion, Lulu banned away, Bwipo is locking in Gangplank. There is no more of a comfort pick and comfort composition than what we've already seen. And for the last question mark, what does self made run in the jungle? I oh, it's the Grogus. All right, this is this is one of those AP junglers that he also plays played a lot this season actually, and I really like this adaptation. Now you have double globals, you have globals in top, you have globals in mid, and of course that Grogus for self made to play around the rest of the map, and it's going to be a bot lane focus again. I feel. And the explosive cask is disengaged for Silas, Lee Sin, Leona. One of the tools if they want to, but because of that gangplank of the top lane. Vladimir is now the reply. Once again, death ball forward. 
I feel like we're going to have a lot of very hectic skirmishes and team fights as we get closer to the mid game. Yeah, this can get really, really crazy because now 369 is that late game scaling insurance. You sort of have Carson Knight to act as the bridge. You know, Knight can follow those TF roams with his ultimate, stealing that one away to have that global pressure and match that. But I mean, late into the game, you do not have a lot of instant reliable CC. You got to wait for the gold card. You got to, you know, wait for Senna's W to prime. Vladimir flanking, flashing into the back lane is going to absolutely destroy Fnatic if they do not pay respect to it. Ooh, we've seen Fnatic initiating and creating opportunities for themselves all series long, especially games one, two, and four. However, we've also seen them overreaching, overcommitting for engagements. And when you look at a Silas, a Leona, a Vladimir, you are gonna get punished so, so heavily. This is our first game five of the quarterfinals at Worlds. Fnatic won the first two games, hotly contested, very close, a game of inches, as it were. Then they get blown out of the water in game three, and the mental state, the fatigue, the pressure on Europe's second seed and on China's first seed. We load into the rift for the final time today. Ender, it has been a hell of a journey. And now we get to see who advances to face off against Suning in the semifinals. The winner of this game books their ticket. Is it Europe or is it China? That's what we're going to find out. Oh, man, I just can't take my eyes away from Karsa. His Nidalee performance was so insane in that last game because I, I really do believe that was Fnatic's game to win right there. It, it was theirs, and Karsa in those fights on the Nidalee finding self-made was so critical to TES turning around and finding success and pushing us to this game number five. And now, once again, he returns to that Lee Sin to have the early game impact and hopefully find some fights around, working with Yuyanja to roam and get kills, because that is what it is all about for TES here, is him acting as the bridge into the late game damage of a Vladimir and an Ezreal. I started talking about Lee Sin's impact in the early game and, and even ask you direct questions of what you think of the champion as a whole. And uh, the basic summary was, well, look, if you can find the impact, if you find the kills, it's great. And that's what Casa has done. Two games in a row, he's had a very large impact on the game. Once again, is going to get a pretty heavy leash this time around. Reckless and Hedasang also helping out Selfmade in both the bottom and the eastern quadrant of the jungle. Yeah, Gragas may be a little bit more reliant on an early leash than some of the other junglers Selfmade has been running today. But one of those things that was so great for Karsa when it came to the early game uh, playmaker was actually a little bit later. Once, once Lee Sin gets his warrior enchantment, again, that, that one-shot potential his ultimate is so, so huge. And especially around that mark, linking up with Yanja either to roam into mid lane and sort of hit the global added source, or even walk into the enemy jungle. We saw that work out really well earlier on in this series, picking off Selfmade when he was playing that Kha'Zix. And Gragas can also be quite vulnerable. He absolutely can. And Hillisang and Reckless, they've been able to have such great success in this 2v2. And I think Hillisang in particular is one of the guys that gets talked about a lot, memed about, you know, coin flip player. Um, he really has been on, especially with his initiations and his engages. And well, let's see how we can handle this Ezreal Leona lane. Uh, Nemesis early ward steps up to the Raptor camp. That'll give some info as oh. and when Costa goes. But look at this level three is going to come around in behind Nemesis. Selfmade is oh, close like by. The, that's the stun. Selfmade, does he decide to turn? Sonic Wave, Resonate Strike, flash away under the tower. First blood to Costa and top esports. Carson gets it going early, right there, hopping into mid lane, getting first blood. Nemesis had just used his pressure to put a ward in the enemy jungle. Did not see a Lee Sin, and then right from underneath, Carsa in game five. This is what I'm saying. Give him the champion he wants to play. Give him that Lee Sin, because he has a huge impact on it. Such a fantastic gank, landing everything. And they get Nemesis's flash as well. He's teleported back to lane to not lose out on too many minions as possible. But this will be a difficult situation to be in. And of course, it landed in Casa, speeding up the time to get that warrior enchant. Yep, really good news for him. And just, you know, early on, you're going to fall down in CS usually in this Silas matchup. But that extra pressure forcing the teleport out of Nemesis, a really big deal as well, Yuyanja. Zenith Blade does connect. A lot of damage there onto Reckless. Cleanse Flash still available to him. Jackie Love and Yuyanja back away. Yeah, that extra damage coming out of the Leona W there, doing some big chunk damage onto Reckless on the back half. You'll see an early reset out of Whippo here. Early lane phase, uh, GP is actually quite favored, and it can sort of walk up into the face of Vladimir trade cues uh, pretty frequently if he ever gets to auto-attack him. That's going to be a big win in the trade for Whippo. So he takes that early pressure, takes the reset, now has a call in his pocket as well. 
the um, passive working out so well for him. Cole also gives you a, a bit of an indication of how Whippo anticipates this laning phase to play out. Um, for the time being, Reckless and Hillisang under a lot of pressure. Yuanja finding a very good engage earlier, burned through some of the potions, but not too many. And Knight right now stepping back with respecting the range that Nemesis yeah. can throw out. Item difference in the jungle. It's a red smite and a long sword with that first blood money for Karsa, whereas Selfmade, rocking the Predator, now has his boots. So has opened up better gank opportunities. But again, Lee Sin always going to be favored if they do meet and if Karsa is able to spot out Selfmade early and be ready for a counter. Yeah. Well, let's see how well Selfmade can impact this game. Um, Karsa already straight out the gates, that level three gank from behind helping out. However, with the lane matchup, the auto, uh, you know, long-range auto attacks of Twister Fade into Silas, he's got himself a 10 CS lead. The wave is just crashing into night for now, so that is to be expected. Yeah. As well as that minion dematerializer to help just make sure you can control the wave at his pace. And as long as Nemesis is able to sort of hold the wave in front of his tower, not push up too far, he should be uh, not too vulnerable. You know, even without the flash, if he's close to his tower, that's the benefit of being in a mid lane. You're not in too much risk. But Karsu will walk in and place a deep ward, has double control Forwards too, so can really start to take control of the jungle. And this could be really good news for someone named Jackie Love, perhaps, who's had the map split against him so many times this series with the priority early on in the jungle matchup with that first blood. Karsa can sort of control which side of the map he can play on and force Selfmade to the other. Now that's where Selfmade's going, up to the top lane, 369, level 5, low on HP. And Selfmade, does he fancy a shot? Oh! Whoa. Okay, welcome back, Selfmade. That's a return. Honestly, game four, it was Jungle Kingdom for both sides. I'll take another. I'll take another. Thank you very much. What I love about that is both of us did not expect that damage. I was like, will he or won't he? Will he commit the flash? Will he commit the flash? Yes is the answer and an instant reply from Fnatic. But here's where Selfmade is actually really, really smart because a lot of Gragas in that situation, they body slam and then they flash. And that's really easy to react to. You know, you say, well, it's hard, but well, you see the whole body slam animation start, well, then immediately you're going to see the pool come out from 369. But he actually flashed a then body slam. So the window in, w in which 369 could actually react looks a little bit shorter and was not able to pop either a flash or that pool in time. So 369 goes down, immediately teleports back into lane. He's still got a 5 CS advantage for now as he's caught most of that wave, but very crucial to note, level 6 for Bwipo, and he's held onto that teleport. And whenever you see any team with a Twisted Fate and a Gangplank, you can expect a party in the bottom lane at some point, right? So that teleport advantage will be very, very crucial to keep an eye on. Can 369 and Kasa unlock it, push him back, zone him away, maybe get the flash as well? Or will Fnatic once again be able to create an environment where they can TP or they can ultimate to the bottom lane? Well, look at this. Level 6 for Karsa. He's already here. Nemesis still no flash and just used the gold card. It's his time. Karsa can go down. in. Look at the river, though. South made Hillisang around. Nemesis needs to cheat south. Cheat south. Does he know that they're there? Hillisang stepping forward. The bait game is on. Gold card is just about to get locked. It does. Goes out onto Knight, and here comes Karsa. Kick forward. Knocked oh. towards the tower. Zen the plane as well. Nemesis stays alive a few seconds longer. Selfmade holding up the body slam. He's going to escape with his life for now. Defensive flash from Hellasang as the cannon barrage came down. Not only do top esports get the kill, they get the ultimate as well. Selfmade was only level five, a level six Gragas there, and that is so many kills. But it's just beautiful there from Karsa, the, the Q onto the minions into the ward hop, and then able to finish off that kill onto Nemesis. Great stuff out of him again to attack this mid lane. Very, very nicely done. One kill for Knight, one kill for Karsa. And here's the replay as Nemesis steps forward to the gold card and Hillis jumps in. But again, it, it looks a little disjointed because Selfmade was placing some vision on the enemy blue buff right when Karsa goes in, hand delivered to Yuyanja. Hillisang actually ended up picking the aggro up off of that Zenith blade, but the difference is the levels. Karsa was able to get to level six before Selfmade with that early pressure, and that changes the whole course of the game. It really, really did. And like you said, had that explosive cast been available, I also wanted to myself had Selfmade, had his flash. If he could have got a three-man knockup under the cannon barrage, maybe it could have been different, but he committed it earlier to pick up the kill. Gold is still even in regards to the game, and Selfmade this time around with level six, as well as the control ward and the tri bush is stepping forward. The moment he steps into the river, Jack and Yanjo will be aware there's no flash on Yuyanja though. He's got that heck flash available to him, but good luck catching Jackie Love with flash, cleanse, as well as an Arcane Shades. Yeah, I think you're, you're, in this game, you're probably targeting the Leona as oh, opposed yes. to the Ezreal. They, they have the vision on the on the TES blue buff, which is why Selfmade was really confident to walk into the river there. He really doesn't think Karsa is on that side of the map, but still doesn't feel sure himself to walk in and try to steal the enemy blue buff with 
how powerful Karsa is. You can see the finished warrior enchant. This is exactly what I'm talking about. His ult is back up and ready to go. So now Karsa, just off of that cooldown, continue to look for fights. And the pathing of Yuyanja is very telling as well. Started going bot side, realizes Karsa is actually calling him over. Karsa wants to make plays happen. Go for the Herald, and Vilona is going to be here with level six. self and Nemesis make their way up. It will be too late to the party, though. By the time Hillisen can make it to the mid lane, this Rift Herald should be down, although, do Fnatic fancy themselves a shot? There's Whoa. the next flash. Zenith Blade, that's a connection on his self made. He gets kicked backwards as well. He cannot even cast his ultimate top esports chain lock in with the CC. And Nemesis forced to use his flash defensively. That was fantastic. Just beautiful coordination between the jungle and support of TES on top of the Rift Herald as well. The game is getting a little bit out of hand for Fnatic. Kills going left, right, center here. And TES are the ones that come out on top of these scraps. Karsa can also walk into the enemy jungle. I think the blue buff went over tonight. Karsa can take the Gromp camp as well. It is starting to, to be put together here for uh -oh. TES. Uh oh. Can Hinsang do anything about this? Or second recall. And that vision. It's going to be. Ooh, that was a little close. Um, Yu Yanjo and the Leone, by the way, had that been a bard lock in, which is what we were discussing a lot, you would not have been able to hex flash Xenoblade over True. that wall, right? So that play is what started all. And the stun lock from the CC was just immense. Yeah, I mean, Karsa just hand delivers the Gragas into Knight, who also stole away that explosive cask and smite comes through for him, so he's going to be able to use that, and he's held on to that uh, a lot, to making sure it goes into the absolute optimal position for his team. With the lead that Knight has, though, I mean, 2 0 one now, 100 CS has already been passed, like, now you can just walk around with Knight. He has that Gragas ultimate. Where can he fight? Let's make it happen. Find, find someone to jump onto. The bottom lane may be the focus. Um, Infernal Dragon is inside the pit, a number of Fnatic pings around us. So Top Esports will start this one off. <laughs> Teleporting Cannon Barrage available for Whippo. He's starting to back away after he's shoved that wave in. Still 23 stacks on that call to go. And we're going to be playing for an Ocean Rift once again. It's only 800 gold, the difference. So while it is not insurmountable by any means, it is still Top Esports that have struck first, that have been proactive, that have not only momentum of the last two games, but momentum this game on their side. And this is a crazy situation to be in because before we started the day, people wanted a game five, but nobody really expected it. Yeah. People wanted to see Fnatic challenge and contest top. And the way that they did was exceptional, but now Fnatic have to dig even deeper. They're behind this game, they're losing tempo in the series, and they have to find a way to control back, especially with top having two dragons already. Yeah, Karsa playing around this bottom side with the Rift Hill. Doesn't end up pulling a trigger on the play, even with self-made towards that top side of the map. Of course, teleports on the other side. Those global ultimates can also be a problem, but it's really hard for self-made to play around top lane. Like, he wants to live in bot side, but he's been relegated to that top end of the map here because of how powerful Karsa is. Like, he has free reign over the Fnatic jungle. Yeah, one zero two Warrior plus Merc Traits. Gonna summon the Rift Herald over the wall oh, to help Knight dirty. out as well. And if, if Nemesis sticks around too long to even try to contest, then the threat of the dive is very, very big. We'll get the charge multiple plates onto Knight, and Knight's even gonna steal away. Zoom out further onto the map, though, because Reckless and Hillsling both started walking up, so Jackie Love is also getting free solo plates in the bot lane. The CS is being denied, and as soon as they see Knight pick up the TF ultimate, well, they can't go bot lane, because otherwise they get dove. Like, this is a miserable position for Fnatic to be in, and they have to be able to force something somewhere, because while well, the gold is 1.5k right now, it's about to become much, much more. The tower in the bottom lane is at risk of falling here. Yanja and Kasa, they're just waiting the moment someone comes past. Oh, there's a ward here, which is fantastic from Top Esports. Krug's available as well. If, if nothing happens, there's still going to be an advantage because multiple plates have fallen. There's going to be one left yet. And you'll see Selfmade finally picking up his red buff while the rest oh, of the Top no. Esports lingering in the way. Selfmade's on the wards, though, so he can't walk down here. I mean, there's no way Nemesis can actually pick up the farm in this bottom lane. He's pathing down here, but it's just not going to work for the team. Actually, Jackie Love going to reset off of that one, apparently. A little concerned about the, the plating resistances that go up the more plates you do knock down. So things will slow down for the time being, but still very much TES favored. It really, really is. Trinity Force was picked up by Bwipo. His cull is now fully stacked. 369 has yet to back. Still got a teleport available for him. Rod of Ages for Nemesis, GLP for Knights, that super soaker. And this this game, the laning phase, has sort of played out. I think, oh, as, no, as no, 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 no. Knight's about to port on bot lane, and Karsa's already here. Nemesis is going to try to get away. Kicked into the face. You cannot escape with the gate. Despite the destiny, Gold Card will buy some time. There will be just enough time 
for Knight to kill Nemesis. Now Hillisang's looking for Jackie Lab. There's a cleanse and a flash. The IG emote was beautiful. Oh, and but Popo no. finds a solo kill to 369. Jackie Lab oh. escapes, sidesteps everything. It does not go down. The Dawning Shadow will not find the kill either. And now Hillisang is going to be the next target. How did Jackie Lab dodge everything? Hillisang goes down as well. IG Jackie Lab is back in the building after flashing that emote, juking out everything. Self made could not find it. TES come up big one more time. It is just a kill from Whippo to try and turn things around in top lane, but it is not enough. Whippo was able to chase down 369, and the last time that Whippo you know, played in uh, against an LPL team in the, sim in the finals of 2018. He was subbed out for Soaz after two games of being unable to have an impact. This time in game five, he has a kill, but Fnatic are faltering. 3,700 gold down, two dragons down, four kills down. And this is the replay of the solo kill. Yeah, I mean, watch the fight up here. 369 has to use the pool to dodge out from the queue and tries to flash away with move speed. Whipple can chase him down, but the real confusion was around mid lane where Hillisang is forcing this play. Selfmade wants nothing of this. The communication is scattered. Like, see his pathing, like he's still confused as to which way he wants to go. While Hillisang uses his entire CC lock, so now Selfmade's abilities can be dodged. And he still commits in for the fight, lands almost anything, but Jackie of the cleanse flash and then walks down. That's oh. it's, it's an outplay from Jackie Love, and it's also a misplay from Self Made. That explosive cast should never miss. What can Jackie Love do? That is what Jackie Love can do after four intense games. Casa and Knight have had their moment in the sun in the first 15 minutes. Look at Casa 2 0 3, got the phage as well as the warrior. Knight 3 0 2. The first time Jackie Love gets jumped on. He sidesteps everything. Hello. And here comes the engage. That's the quickness into explosive card. Jackie Love gets knocked into the end, taken down by self -made. He lunges the next target. Five members of Fnatic in the middle lane, and they turn their attention on tonight. Knight has hijacked himself. An explosive cast, and he throws it backwards. Nemesis is the target. Flash over the wall from Knight, and Kass is there to help. A couple of quick kills to Fnatic. Fnatic still want more. Whippo's ultimate is just about to return. Same with Nemesis, so they can chase if TES posture too aggressively inside the river. Fnatic will take the fight and they'll take the dragon on top. That is absolutely massive for them. They don't get that fight, they lose this dragon. It's now sole point for TES. Their tournament lives were on the line, but not only that, the motivation, the confidence, the self-belief. We've seen multiple games where Fnatic were popping off and take a look at self made Hilly combo. Here. Hilly is stone cold here, because you know, by all means he should be hopping over the wall, but he realizes he can find Jackie Love. Now it's self made and Hilly saying comboing together. Jackie Love is killable, especially after losing his summoners in the last fight. But this is what Fnatic will do when they start to fall behind. They will throw fights at yes. you repeatedly. It worked because TES were scattered 369 was there, but it opens up if TES are ready the next time for Fnatic to get completely Punish. 17 minutes in, Bwipo is the gold leader in the game, but then look at that night, Jackie Love Casa. Everybody watching, do you believe? That is the question, because Fnatic are still two and a half, 3,000 gold down. They are in a very big deficit, but you have seen how they can combo. This game is still top esports favored. The series was top esports favored. And with the fact that Knight and Casa are still terrifying, you need to keep a very close eye on what impact they can have and whether or not sort of self-made Healy can lock one of them up long enough to die. That can be how Fnatic win those skirmishes. Yeah, I mean, I, for now, I just want to see TES continue to play the game they have been playing. When the yeah. objectives go down, it's Karsa punching at side lanes, playing around Knight in particular. 369, his own two, just let him farm up. That's going to be fine. But around Knight, who has that kill pressure, that CC setup for Karsa can be absolutely deadly and also help them take control over Fnatic's jungle. Because once Fnatic lose control of the jungle, all of a sudden, it's so much harder for Hillsang to find those, you know, creative flanks through the fog four. Now, something that has been interesting all series long is that around the 20 minute mark, we'll get to that in a moment, um, there have been fairly early barons, like a big team fire, a big engage that has led to an early baron. And as we're getting to that 20 minute moment, notice that Knight was able to hijack away the cannon barrage. It's three minutes until the next dragon. So I think it'll be 
hugely influential, but with no outer turrets, Fnatic have to push so far to contest. Yeah, the reason why we keep seeing these early barons is that the teams are actually fighting over dragon, but no one starts the dragon. Like they they don't they won't won't let you into the river, right? You know, they they see the fight before it happens. They don't want to waste any time on that objective, waste any opportunity for the enemy team to steal that one away. So. See Hero, Kill Hero has been the name of the game for these squads. And with the Black Cleaver in Cost's inventory, there's a lot of tools to do so. Hourglass was picked up for Knight as well, and that's coming up to six stacks of Roa, a Sheen and a Wisp for Nemesis. So there's a big disparity. I mean, look at Jackie Love as well. You know, Man Immune stacking, Iceborne Gauntlet into Thrift Shopping off to the Man Immune. So big differences, although this very second Ghost Blade was just picked up. That is going to be crucial for the next few fights. And if there is one thing that does benefit Fnatic here, they do have a lot of scaling on their side. There's benefits to them. The Senna can be very, very useful to stay a little bit out of range yeah. of some of those uh, initiation tools. Yeah, the, the struggle is always going to be dealing with the Vladimir, but for the foreseeable future, 369 isn't a big issue yes. for Fnatic. It's more, you know, the, the dive of Carson Knight, Jackie Love being in a very powerful position as soon as that uh, Death Dance comes through as well. Like, uh, that Israel isn't going to be killable uh, from the side of Fnatic. But for Fnatic, the way they want to approach these fights, they want to play slow. Whippo is really powerful, actually, uh, especially building towards some magic resistance here. But Karsa has now entered the brush. Oh, he man. Assassinate. He can assassinate. Oh, man. And here comes Karsa. Sonic wave right between Reckless and Hilly. The 369 is going to be able to dash away to safety. I think that's the Predator popped as well from self -made. He's going to try to steal away as many Raptors as he can. Actually, he's going to try to secure as many Raptors as he can. Top Esports, on the other hand, they were stealing them. And the wild cards plus the blue card will not be enough to steal to secure the blue buff. It's this From denial, Mons, though, falling apart. over the mini objectives like the blue. The Raptor camp, Dionja finds it. Santa's oh. Blade will go in, bounce away from the boss code. But this is what you talked about, Ender. You said you wanted to see Kasa and Knight playing the side lane. You see, they shoved that side lane in, collapse into the jungle, contest over the buffs. Yeah. And we're going to do that rinse and repeat until this dragon comes up. Yeah, I mean, the dragon's going to spawn. And then we're uh, Fnatic are going to have to ask themselves if they actually want to contest it because all the items are, are coming through from TES. You know, the Mirror Mana finally upgraded as well on the so they are very, very strong. And the only way Fnatic win these fights, I feel, is really playing around the chaining of Whippo's barrels. He's level 13, a huge spike on the gangplank, so he can keep, you know, rapid fire dishing those out. But his positioning has to be so good into a lot of these champions from TES so he can actually output the damage. It's dragon time here for Top Esports. Teleport comes in from Knight. They'll be spawning shortly. Spellbind and Protobelt for 369. You Ask the question, Man. Fnatic want to think, do they? We know they want to. That, that's, that's, I think, say, should they? Is the question I'm going to ask you when we look at the state of the lanes. Bottom lane is pushing a little bit, and there is a teleport available from Whippo, and here comes Top Esports. They're in the pit. Yeah, they're starting this one off. Fnatic have control of the mid wave, and they're now walking down into the river, but they might just be too late, Trevor. Yeah, it absolutely feels that way. Um, 2,000 HP. Yuyan just waiting in the winds. Dragon will go down. That's the third. Yuyan just looking for the center's plane. He won't find the target, but Whippo gets jumped on. He gets kicked backwards, and he's taken out by Jackie Love. The most fed, farmed member of Fnatic is down, and 369 plucks Hillisang from the sky. TES show up in the fight, and we're once again going to see them head towards an early Baron. Selfmate is alive, but it's a five versus three. It's all looking TES. It feels like every single game this happens. Nemesis is no destiny available. The Dawny Shadow and Flashing Cleanser up for Reckless, and Selfmate has Flash and Smite, but are they even going to contest? The answer right now is no. The LPL has struck back. I said it at the end of the last game, and I'm going to say it again now. There has never been a reverse sweep at Worlds, and top esports are setting themselves up to close it out. The, the collapse down on Whippo, everyone on TES, they realize Whippo was the problem. They isolate him and they destroy him. Hillisang also gets caught off. It just looks too easy for the LPL representatives and now have everything they need to close out this game. And it's just been a story of Casa and Knight over the last few games. I mean, mitigating and controlling Reckless and Hillisang was step one to top esports comeback this series. They found answers for that. Now they also found ways to play in the lane against Reckless Senna or Ash. And from there on, 369 Casa and Knights have now had a chance to step up. 369 in many of the previous games. This game been less exciting, shall we say. But definitely throughout the series has been one of the standouts. And now with a 5,000 gold lead, with Baron buff, they already had control of the rift. 
They have all the tools they need to close it out, and it's all going to be on Fnatic. Find Fnatic those the fight. exceptional picks. Fnatic want the fight. Every time against the Baron, they're going to look for it, but they missed their engage. Yonja dodged it out, and now their towers are gone. Now the window has passed, and TES get one more objective. They do. That's the fourth tower secured. Bottom in a turret, top in a turret. It's all that's standing. All the ultimates are available for Fnatic. Oh, there goes the car. That's onto Jackula, but they need to take him out. The Dawning Shadow is not going to be able to land, and they don't get it done. 369 gets exhausted, goes into the Sanguine Pool. South goes golden and stays alive for a few seconds longer, and nobody dies in the fight despite catching Jackie Love. It was a heroic effort from Fnatic, and they spent everything to get the TES AD carry, but they could not finish him off that this time. You see the death stance in the inventory? He's unkillable. Fnatic do not have what it takes to take him out of the fight. Plus the flash, plus the cleanse. He had all the tools, and Top Esports will secure another tower. The Red Bull Baron power play up they to 3,000. That's the engage, but there's not enough damage following it up. Teleport's coming in. Selfmate was not there. One, two, three members of Fnatic are down. The catch on to Reckless Knight and the rest of Top Esports have done it again. They've got enough time. They've got Baron Minions and they may have just won the series. Flashing the RNG logo. Casa is going to set himself up with a showdown against Sword Art. And Self Made will be the final kill, the final nail in the coffin, and the final blow for Fnatic. Top Esports, for the first time, will pull off the re reverse sweep. Top Esports will face off against Sooning in the semi-finals. And for one more year in a row, we are guaranteed an LPL representative in the final. Top Esports were one game away from defeat. Three times in a row, but they claw it back. Karsa, an absolute beast in game four, from the jaws of defeat, somehow finding a win. In this game, attacking mid early, finding his moves on that Lee Sin. An absolutely godly performance from the jungler of TES. The mental resilience and fortitude for top esports. They were the favorites this series. They had the depth of play, and they were pushed to the brink of utter collapse spare a thought for Fnatic they put up a valiant fight but ultimately top esports outperformed them heartbreak for Fnatic there's no other word they were up 2-0 reckless had the upper hand in the bot lane matchup the revenge against Jackie Love he waited two years to find but it's bigger than just one player it's, it's a whole team effort, and Top Esports showed up in those final three games. They did, absolutely every single one. And I, I think I said just before that game ended, Top Esports needed to gain control of that bottom lane because Hillisang and Reckless wrecked them for the opening games of this series. But as the draft began to adapt, and as the play styles of the individuals began to change a little bit, we saw more ganks top than we did bottom. We saw Casa helping out mid, you know, adapting. Fnatic were unable to keep up with the adaptations that Top Esports made. And we saw Carsa be completely unlocked on the Nidalee, on the Lee Sin. Uh, impressive stuff. This has been a, a meta defined by junglers, and Carsa was the best jungler on the Rift today. Absolutely exceptional. We'll get more takeaways in this epic series in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Ender, sick quarterfinal, dude. Boom! Yo! <laughs>